On this edition of the Table of Content, we are joined by Rhiannon Owen, a volunteer for We Are One Body Audio Theater. We'll talk with her about some of the productions she's taken part in and why she likes audio theater. That's coming up next, right here on the Table of Content. Thanks so much for tuning in to this edition of the Table of Content. I am your host, Albert Sines, and we have the pleasure of being joined by one of the audio theater volunteers, Rhiannon Owen. Rhiannon, thanks so much for being with us. Yeah, no problem. Excited to talk to you. Well, we're excited to hear what you have to tell us. Uh, As always, almost verbatim, I like to give the audience a chance to learn about who I'm talking to. So can you give the listeners some background, kind of a bio, who you are, what you do, uh, how you ended up where you are? Yeah, uh, I am an actor, musician, and singer. Uh, I'm from Baltimore, and I'm currently living in Baltimore, But uh, in December 2019, I graduated from Seton Hill University with my BA in musical theater. Uh, So being up in Western Pennsylvania for college is how I found We Are One Body. Um, It wasn't too far from Greensburg where I went to school. Um, But yes, so I I act, I sing, I play piano some, I write some songs, a little of all that. So... You, you really sound like you're trying to make it very humble. You know, you act, you sing, you play piano, you write some songs, you happen to do some audio acting on the side. Uh, I, it sounds like there's a bit more than uh, just sort of simply you write some songs. But I, I'm interested in the acting. Uh, are, are we talking like stage acting? Is that kind of the acting? Yeah, primarily like live stage acting. Uh, musical theater is primarily like musicals on stage. So are we are we headed for Broadway? Uh, that would be really nice. <laughs> Love to do that. Well, I guess I, I guess we'll see if you end up on a on a billboard on Times Square, huh? Oh yeah. Okay. Well, so uh, you said that you were in the Greensburg area because of college, mm-hmm. and you discovered We Are One Body Audio Theater. And I'm curious first as to what even drew you to saying, hey, can I be a part of audio theater? Um, Yeah, it was actually, I was working on my honors capstone. For my capstone, I really wanted to write a musical. And I was considering making it an audio theater musical. Uh, I had just recently gotten into uh, the radio drama uh, Cabin Pressure. Well, it's not a drama, it's a comedy uh, Cabin Pressure, which is a BBC comedy. It has Benedict Cumberbatch in it. What's not to okay. love? Okay, yep. Um, right, right. <laughs> and, um, and so I was really interested in making an audio theater musical. So I really did just Google audio theater near Pittsburgh, and uh, We Are One Body is the first thing that came up. So I reached out and said I was really interested in uh, learning more about audio theater Uh the my ultimate honors capstone project ended up being uh, not audio theater because I found out that writing a musical in itself is hard enough uh, beyond tackling a medium that I was only just beginning to get familiar with. Sure. Um, but still, uh, once I came to talk to them to learn a little more about audio theater, they asked me to record some poems while I was there, and I came back and I kept doing that. So, you know, I, I I'm. I'm interested in what you said. You said that you actually sort of were, you know, outside of whatever you were inspired from school and uh, the BBC series uh, with Benedict Cumberbatch, uh, that you sort of were like, hey, you know, I'm going to look to see if there's audio theater near Pittsburgh. You know, I, I think a lot of people just the to just even think to look up something directly related to audio theater uh, – sounds just like you don't have a lot of people doing that but you but you did it and by chance you happened to find that there was audio theater near Pittsburgh in We Are One Body Audio Theater so i appreciate that you actually just sort of reached out and searched and found the answer you were looking for um now let's talk a little bit about some of the productions that you've been a part of uh Let's look at one of our series that you were a part of. You were a part of uh, when we did a 
this was about two years ago now, or two Christmases ago, we did a full rendition of A Christmas Carol. Yeah. Can you talk about your role in A Christmas Carol? Yeah, I played a fan in A Christmas Carol. So in the Ghost of Christmas Past scene, she's Scrooge's younger sister. Um, that was, I, I was so excited to be part of such a huge thing, even though I was only in like just the one scene. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, of course, what's really interesting about doing audio theater, I never actually met the actor playing young Scrooge in the scene with me. <laughs> um, right, right. I, I came in and I did my monologue and a couple other lines. And, uh, and, and then they spliced that in with young Scrooge. And then I got to hear what I sounded like with the other person uh, when everybody else did. Right. So it sounded like you were right there with, with the actor. Right. Uh, you know, I was, I played the role of uh, Bob Cratchit and we, we had those moments of, you know, can you record this? And there was the scenes where I recorded with quote unquote, my family. And that was a nice experience. We're all kind of recording together, but then there's the other scenes where you're not necessarily, you're sort of separated out. Uh, Cause I don't think I recorded with the, so Paul Guggenheimer was the Scrooge, mm. uh, was our Ebenezer Scrooge, and I don't think I got to record with him directly. Um, but just like you said, you go in and you record with people, and then you don't record with people. Uh, but another interesting setup of audio theater over the past year was the live Zoom productions. And that's sort of a take on what you were explaining about sort of not being with someone, but in the concepts of the live Zoom productions, you kind of were virtually, and you took play. Uh, you played a part in our live production, Smart City. Can you tell our listeners about your role in that production? Oh yeah, in Smart City. Well, it was really cool getting to be a part of a show with like an original script, brand new. Uh, so I played Amy, who was kind of the representative of Smart City and uh, showing uh, the other character around the city uh, and what it looked like. Um, of course, the fact that it was on Zoom and you could see my face and I could actually act with my face too uh, meant it was a little bit more of what I'm used to, but obviously the audio element was still like the main thing and there were a lot of like uh, audio effects also. Right, right. It, in, in particular, did you find that uh, doing the virtual production, did you find it as sort of, hey, this is a good creative outlet. This is another way to short, sort of share in your dramatic abilities or did you feel like well you know this is nice but uh, i'd rather do something different i'm just curious on your take on doing a virtual production um i mean obviously i miss getting to be in person with people but um mm -hmm. making the zoom productions is so fun because i i mean i thought when i finished college uh and i moved uh away from the pittsburgh and the trobe area that i wouldn't be getting to do anything else with we are one body again so when they started doing virtual zoom productions i could be in my uh in the show from maryland which was really amazing uh, to get to perform with people from all over and then of course when it streamed just on facebook live i could uh anybody i knew from all over could come watch so that was really it's cool uh it has some drawbacks i miss being sure. around people sure. but it definitely is cool you know i uh, i think that we all would like to sort of have that sort of social contact. But like you said, the ability to continue to contribute to something like audio theater, even when you're living a few states away, um, is, is a good option. Mm -hmm. And for the listeners, you know, um, you know, if you'd like to potentially try to contribute, it all kind of depends on equipment and distance and quality. There's a lot of things to consider. But uh, if anyone's listening and you're thinking, wow, so someone else got to be a part remotely, uh, you can always uh, contact us and see if maybe there's a way that you might be able to contribute. Uh, like I said, there's uh, some, a lot of uh, just kind of a checklist uh, to kind of go through. But if you happen to maybe have a recording set up at home, because uh, we have... Uh, a few people and one person who's actually a professional voiceover artist and gosh, he lives across the country, but he's able to contribute recordings to us. So uh, much like Rihanna was able to partake in a virtual production, there's other people contributing uh, remotely as well. So it's a good uh, point that Rihanna was bringing up so that I can tell our listeners, hey, uh, maybe you can do something for us as well, even though you're not in the greater Pittsburgh area. 
Now, Rhiannon, I, I want to get back to your recordings. Out of all of your recordings, is there one that you've done that was really sort of your favorite? Oh, gosh. I mean, I did. I really liked doing Smart City, um, which was a lot of fun getting to do like an original uh, script mm -hmm. and kind of create my own character from that. But I'm trying to think of recordings I've done uh, other than the live shows. I actually, I did, and I got to record the Steinway sonnet, which was actually a poem by Gretelin, which was really cool um, to get to see my director and, like, read something that she wrote, one of the directors from We Are One Body. Now, the, the poetry versus drama, because obviously, you know, a, a dramatic production, you're really, you have a character, you're given kind of a personality, you have to bring the character to life. A poem, you're trying to express the poem, and the writer in this instant, it was Gretelyn Darkey, yeah. and you're trying to express her thoughts across the the spectrum of, of audio. Do you see a great difference yourself from being an actor in something like Smart City and, you know, I'll say just reading a poem? And I don't mean to downplay poetry <laughs> at all, but I'm just trying to provide some contrast. Do you see a big difference there? Um, no, I don't think I really approached it super differently. Uh, the biggest difference, I think, for me is with Smart City, of course, it was a full, like, I forget exactly how long it was, but I definitely had a lot more words to work with as opposed to mm -hmm. a poem is fairly short. So I have um, a little less to, like, go off of when I kind of decide how I want to read it and what kind of person I am when I read it. Um, but, yeah, I think it's still about the same. Someone else wrote something and I get to bring it to life by saying it out loud. You know, and, and, we, and we've done a lot of poetry. It's probably one of our biggest uh, productions. So if you were at our website or on our YouTube channel or on our podcast channels, you'd see uh, our poetry, which we dub the Poetry Patch, has sort of the most extensive list of poems. And we've had so many people read for us, and such as Rhiannon, who's read for us. I've done poetry. My wife's done poetry. Uh, a lot of people have done the poetry. And I think it's a nice balance between the dramatic characters, a story, different voices, sound effects, but then to just have a, a poem, which is, I think, more sometimes uh, something deeper, you know, and I think people interpret poetry in different ways. I think a very well-written poem is something that's meant to sort of inspire sort of the inner part of our soul. And I think it's a nice contrast and balance. So you can get kind of the adventurous Smart City mm -hmm. uh, recording or a Christmas Carol, a retelling of the Dickens classic. Or you can just sit down and hear a poem read by Rhiannon Owen, the Steinway Sonnet. You should go and listen to the Steinway Sonnet on our website or YouTube channel. You should go and find that and listen to Rhiannon's recording. Or you can listen to Rhiannon on Smart City. That should be available on our YouTube channel as well. So uh, you are in Baltimore, you're, I assume, following your dreams, your paths uh, in one shape, form, or another, but are you hopeful to continue your uh, participation with We Are One Body Audio Theater? Oh, sure. In any way I can. Uh, once I'm able to travel again, it would certainly be fun to come back to the studio in Latrobe. Uh, still certainly happy to uh, record things from home. Um, it's, it's cool because I, I like doing it and it's also, it's pretty low key getting to record audio theater because I don't have to memorize anything. Right, that helps. Um, so yeah. Well, I'm sure that, um, without any question, audio theater would love to have you <laughs> to continue to contribute. Uh, but is there anything in particular? Is there something that you would like to sort of be involved in? Uh, down the road, you know, you'd love to do and some larger dramatic production. You'd love to do uh, more poetry. Just is there something different maybe you would like to be able to do with audio theater? Hmm. Oh, that's a tough one. I like I like a tough question once in a while. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, I think since I come from more of an acting background, I do like to get to do more audio drama type things uh, with more like dialogue as opposed to just recording a poem. Um, so like even getting to be in like a Christmas Carol 
where I didn't actually get to record with anybody, but it was certainly more like drama oriented. Mm -hmm. Certainly more up my alley and what I really love doing. Any, any interest, but you know, you said that you're writing music, but are you, do you do any writing of like stories? Uh, Not at the moment. Uh, what I have, I have songs. I write a lot. Um, I write songs when I wrote uh, my capstone musical, as we come back around to that. That did include right. writing the script as well as the music and lyrics. So uh, it's mostly theater oriented as opposed to like poetry and stories. Sure, sure. Well, it sounds like you have a desire and a drive to continue in your own passion for drama and music and theater and also continuing to find ways to contribute to audio theater. So we look forward to finding uh, the future with audio theater and Rhiannon and Owen being involved in it. So uh, thank you for your continued interest and desire for wanting to be a part of it. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we've been talking to Rhiannon and Owen, a volunteer with audio theater. And as I was saying earlier, if you'd like to hear any of uh, Rhiannon's uh, recordings, you can go to our YouTube, our podcast directories. You can check out uh, our Facebook page. If uh, some of the uh, video recordings were live there are recorded, so that Smart City production is still on our Facebook page. Basically, you should be able to go and find Rhiannon and listen to some of her recordings if you are interested. We would love to have our audience patronize our, our volunteers to give them support and to let them know that we enjoy what it is that they do for audio theater. Rhiannon, thanks so much for taking some time to talk with me. Absolutely. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope that you have enjoyed this episode of The Table of Content, and I hope that you will tune in again. Until next time, be good, stay safe, peace. <laughs>